Mitran. In today's chess video, I am going to be showing you a chess game that was played by Timur Rajava vs Vishay Anand in the 2002 World Rapid Championship. Timur Rajava, who is playing from the white pieces, opens the game with the move pawn to d4. Knight to f6, pawn to c4 and pawn to e6. Knight to f3 and in this position, Vishay Anand does not go for d5 entering into the queen's gambit decline. Instead, he goes for pawn to b6. The queen's Indian defense is on the board. a3. So this move is pretty useful because it prevents future bishop to b4 ideas and bishop to b7. Knight to c3, pawn to d5 and c captures d5. Knight captures d5, queen to c2, developing the queen and preparing e4 ideas. Knight captures c3, b captures c3 and bishop to e7. e4, bishop to e7, bishop to d3 and c5. Black strikes in the center. Castles, castles and bishop to b2. So all of this was considered to be standard theory at that time and Vishay Anand simply plays rook to c8. He wants to play c captures d4. Queen to e2 was played because this rook was eyeing the queen on c2. So white simply removes it from c2. And after queen to e2, queen to c7 and rook to e8 were the top popular choices in those days. So, after this move, bishop to b2, rook to c8, threatening c captures d4, queen to e2, removing the queen, and c4 was played. And this move was a pretty curious move, and this is definitely a good move, because after bishop captures c4, can you spot the idea that Vishay Anand had in his mind? Well, after bishop captures c4, he simply removed a central pawn with bishop captures c4, and this is what Vishay's idea was. If you play queen capture c4, then after rook capture c4, in this position, black is the one having the advantage. Bishop to a6. Now Timur Rajabo is attacking this rook and is attacking this bishop. Bishop captures f3, queen captures f3 and rook to c7. Developing the rook and bringing the rook out of harm's way. Rook a d1 and bishop to d6. As this bishop was not doing much on e7, black brings it to a useful diagonal. Bishop to d3. Now this bishop is eyeing this pawn on h7. b5. And once again Vishay Anand is saying if you play bishop captures b5 then after queen to b8, c4 and a6. Bishop takes d7. Bishop takes h2. King takes h2. Black plays rook takes d7 giving a check to the king and after king g1, queen captures b2. In this position certainly black has the advantage because he has more targets to attack in the center. So obviously Timur Ajabo does not go for a pawn. He plays rook f1. He, want. he wants to bring the rook into the game. a6 strengthening this pawn on b5 and a4. Giving up a pawn. b captures a4 and this is what Timur's idea was. He plays c4 and he creates a beautiful passer pawn with c4. And now he is threatening c5. Queen to b8 putting pressure on this bishop. Bishop to a1 and rook to d8. Developing the rook and bishop to e7 ideas are possible. Rook to e4. White wants to play rook to h4 and then create some mating ideas. Knight to f6. Attacking the rook. Rook to h4 and bishop to e7. So now this bishop is threatening some discoveries with knight to d5. Then it will attack the rook on h4. Rook to h3. Bringing the rook back and h6 was played. In this position, pause the video for a few minutes and try to come up with the best move for white. Well, after h6, white has the advantage and he can keep pushing with pawn to c5, threatening bishop captures a6. But Tamer Ajabo played the move rook to b1 and this is a fatal error. Pause the video for a few minutes and in this position, try to come up with the best move for black. Well, after rook to b1, this rook is very weak on b1. Only this bishop is defending this rook. So obviously Vishay Anand goes for rook captures c4. He is giving up a free queen. And after this rook captures c4, white must play queen to d1. And then after rook to b4, rook captures and b4, queen captures b4. Black has the advantage because of his pawn majority. But after rook captures c4, Timur Ajabo got curious and he plays the more rook captures b8. And he's telling to Vishi, what compensation do you have? Rook to c1 check, bishop to f1, and now rook captures b8. So now rook to b1 and rook captures f1 is the threat. 
and the main threat is rook up to c1 bishop to c3 bringing the rook out of harm's way rook bb1 threatening queen rook up to c7 queen to d3 and now a3 and in this position what is black's compensation why did he give up a free queen you can notice that this rook and this pawn turn out to have more compensation than this bishop this rook this queen and this bishop so after this a3 move black is simply threatening to play a2 and rook up to c3 for example g3 a2 and then after king to g2 rook up to c3 queen up to c3 a1 queens that's the idea after this a3 move queen up to c6 and now a2 so queen up to a2 is not possible because of rook up to f1 g4 there are no possible good continuation for white he is simply trying some g4 g5 ideas rook up to f1 and after queen up to f1 not rook up to f1 because white can escape with king up to f1 but knight to e4 and the idea behind knight to e4 is that if you continue with your plan of g5 then after knight up to c3 if you rook up to c3 rook up to f1 king up to f1 a1 queens king to e2 queen up to c3 So after this knight to e4 move, bishop to a1, bringing the bishop back into the game, and here came the final blow, knight to d2, and now rook captures f1 as a threat, and there is nothing Timur Rajab or could play, and it was in this position that he finally resigned the game. After knight to d2, we are threatening rook captures f1 checkmate. So if you play rook to a3, then after rook captures f1, king captures g2, and rook captures a1. Rook a7. You have bishop to b4, bishop c3, and knight to b3. And black will sooner or later win this game. But after knight to d2, what happens if you play queen captures b1? Well, then a captures b1, king to g2, and then can you spot the four move checkmate? Queen up one check, king g3, bishop d6, and after king h4, g5, king to h5, queen captures h3. It's a beautiful checkmate indeed. So after this move, knight to d2, Timur Rajabov finally resigned the game, and that ends, friends, the great miniature of Timur Rajabov versus Vishy Anand. If you like this video, please comment, share, and subscribe. I will be visiting you with more chess videos on opening chess traps, puzzles, and game strategies very soon. So subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future content. Thank you, and have a great day, friends.